Hi there. Welcome to the End Times Bible Study. My name is Lee. It's a pleasure to have you with me. It is Monday morning. It's sunny out after driving through snow most of the morning, uh, delivering a load of lumber to Yakima, Washington. And from there over to Seattle right now, Snoqualmie Pass looks ugly. But we'll see what it looks like by the time I get there uh, after I've unloaded. It's going to be a few hours yet, and it's right around freezing, a little above freezing now, so it may improve a lot, but it certainly will improve to some degree before I get there, hopefully enough that I don't have to chain up this truck to get up the hill. But uh, today I want to talk a little bit about small business in your area. As the globalists are struggling to build this world empire centered around their own authority and leadership, they're making war against small business because small business makes up 60% of the economy in a lot of developed countries. It's a very important part of our economy because the tax dollars generated, tax revenues go to the communities and the regions. Whereas the big corporations in many cases don't even pay taxes or pay very little tax to some offshore account. And Right now, we're seeing a kind of a war against small business to get rid of them. And many small businesses are simply not going to be able to survive a second lockdown. So I'm encouraging you to support small business however you can and try and keep them together because it's scary. Walmart, Amazon, Target, Lowe's are growing very, very powerful as the small businesses are disappearing, drying up, unable to keep their doors open. And that's dangerous for us because it just increases and centralizes power, which is exactly what the globalists want. So our way of fighting back is to do what we can to support local businesses. So having said that, let's dive into the word of God. And we are in Acts chapter 12 now looking at Peter's arrest, uh, beginning in verse 1. Now, about that time, Herod the king laid hands on some who belonged to the church in order to mistreat them. And he had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. When he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him to four squads of soldiers to guard him intending after the Passover to bring him out before the people. So Peter was kept in the prison, but prayer for him was being made fervently by the church of God. So King Herod has been a real enemy right from the birth of Jesus when he had all the children, male children under the age of two put to death trying to eliminate Jesus before he could become a king. He had John the Baptist beheaded for his uh, daughter. And now he has John or uh, James, the brother of John, arrested and killed with a sword along with some other disciples. And seeing that it pleased the people, he went ahead and grabbed Peter as well, who is at, at this time or just a little after this time, the Bishop of Jerusalem, a main figure in the Christian church in Jerusalem at this time, and Herod has him arrested. Now, the Christian church has to be looking at this with dread. James has been put to death. The disciples that were with him were executed, and now they have Peter. Logically, it seems like there's no hope for Peter but they begin to fervently pray. And this is exactly how Jesus prayed as well. Fervently, desperately, passionately crying out to God. And these kinds of prayers are powerful. They emerge from the heart, not from the mind. And God hears us when we pray with all our heart and soul and strength. He hears our prayers. And we're going to see that God answers this prayer and delivers Peter. And in our time right now, in these end times, when we see terrible things happening to the Christian church around the world, to our brothers and sisters, to our restrictions of freedom of worship, 
Uh, we can get that sense of helplessness and hopelessness. How do we stand against this great Leviathan? Well, take some encouragement from the scriptures because God is in control ultimately of all things. And when we pray fervently, God will work miracles on our behalf. We can't dismiss or give up on or forget that God can work a miracle in any situation. So I hope that we would be encouraged to keep praying, to keep hoping, to keep believing, no matter what we see in today or tomorrow's news headlines. Thank you for joining me and God bless you.